Well, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you all on this beautiful morning. Um, wonderful morning. Welcome to those of you here in church, in Axbridge Church, and those of you who are joining us on Zoom online. Just a couple of notes before we start our service. The first is that at the end of uh, the service itself, um, we have the first of our three annual meetings. Um, uh, this week for Axbridge, next Sunday it will be for Shipham, and on the 25th it will be Robra's um, annual meeting. But today, um, here in church, and if you are able to stay online and join with us in that way, then you'd be welcome to. And Michael, Mike will um, um, sort us out uh, before the service, uh, the, the, uh, the meeting itself starts. The second is that um, there is a, a wonderful fair trade uh, uh, stall at the back of church. So if you are able to have a look at that before you go, um, that would be wonderful. The next is that um, from tomorrow, we are going to start opening church here every day and have it open in an unsupervised way. Over the last few months, we've had the church open on three afternoons a week um, with somebody here. Um, but from tomorrow, we're opening it so that people can come and go. And we will make clear what the protocols are of keeping us as safe as we possibly can. We'd like to say a big thank you indeed to those who've helped to make sure our church is open uh, during this period. And finally, um, next Sunday, our services at eight o'clock, we have a service in uh, Robra Church, then at 10 o'clock in Shipham Church, the Together in Worship, where the um, annual meeting will follow. And in uh, for those of you um, unable to get to either of those, there will be an online Zoom service um, at 10 o'clock. So no service here in Axbridge Church next Sunday. So today we gather our thoughts and remember God's presence among us. Um, we're going to be thinking particularly about some words from Paul to the people in Philippi. Amongst them, we will hear the words, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So would you please stand? Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And David will now lead us in this lovely hymn, O Breath of Life, come sweeping through us. If you'd like to stand or, or sit, um, a reminder that those of us in church aren't able to sing out loud. But the um, rest of you, please sing to your heart's content. Oh, this way. 
we pray that the Holy Spirit would indeed cleanse, renew and restore us as we confess our need and pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our special prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So Malcolm is going to read Paul's encouraging words for us um, from um, the, the Paul's letter to the Philippians. The reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the Book of Life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So our gospel reading is the parable of the marriage, marriage feast, which uh, Janet is going to read for us Janet now. Janet is going to read for us now. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves for the banquet. They've been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, 
The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? The man was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of each of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The parable that uh, Janet has just read does beg to be talked about somewhat um, because of the conclusion of it uh, where uh, it seems highly unfair that somebody who's dragged off the street hasn't got the right clothes for a wedding. Um, but I want us to concentrate this morning instead on a passage that's one of my favourite bits of the New Testament, certainly one of my favourite bits of Paul's writing. It's a passage that's full of wisdom, and I think it has something of the true spirit of what it means to be a Christian. What wisdom does it have for us, this passage that Malcolm read for us? There are words in it, I think, that are worth knowing and knowing by heart. It begins, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Paul's epistle to the Philippians is known as an epistle of joy. And you might be tempted to think, well, it's all right for him to say rejoice. He doesn't have to look um, put up with pandemics and stuff like that. But he was writing it, in fact, at the end of his life and from a prison cell in Rome. And he talks about rejoicing because God is there in that prison cell with him. God is near. But I can't hear these words without hearing them spoken um, in our church in Stafford in the mid-80s by a man called Ken Crew in an extraordinary kind of sing-song voice. It was the first time that he read in church, and he read these words, um, Rejoice in the Lord always. He'd learnt the words by heart, and his sing-song voice was because he was deaf, completely deaf, he heard nothing. So he had that um, difficulty of knowing how to pitch and make his voice sound normal. But not only was he deaf, he was also blind. So he had the words, not in a braille form, but in a form that he could read called moon. But he'd actually learnt the words by heart, and they came from the heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. Paul goes on, let your gentleness be known to all. Now, in the next few days, after many years, the uh, plot next door to the rectory is going to become a building site. Built bulldozers, scaffolding, cement mixers, and the ubiquitous um, builder's radio coming over. But before that has been able to start, um, somebody has been carefully, carefully um, um, catching over a hundred slow worms 
um, which there were in that area of field and taking them to a special place on the Mendips and releasing them. The picture is the picture of gentleness, that although the juggernauts of building goes on, it can only happen with gentleness too. Let your gentleness be known to all. As we begin this season of annual meetings, it's important for us to remember and focus on the fact that a church without a ministry or mission to others has lost its way somehow. We have a clear mission to minister the love of, of God, the gentleness of God. And we always need to be an open and welcoming uh, community to others. The person at our door who needs our help. If we want um, uh, a mission statement, then um, just a summary of the law is pretty good. Love God, love your neighbour. Love God, love Axbridge, love Shipham or Robra, wherever it is. With gentleness. Roger Hargreaves produced a whole series of books that have delighted children, parents, and God and godparents and grandparents alike, the Mr. Men books. And one he wrote is called Mr. Worry. Mr. Worry worries about everything. If it rains, he worries that the roof will leak. And if it's not raining, he's worried that his plants will all die. He even worries about worrying, for goodness sake. And the cartoon picture of him is with a very, very furrowed brow and eyes that are stressed. Is that us? Anxiety can easily eat away at us and certainly get in the way of us being able to rejoice, as Paul says. Indeed, worry can easily lead to a sense of despair and hopelessness. But let's remember, as Paul encourages us to, that the Lord is near. The Lord is at hand in one translation. In the Eucharistic prayer that we'll say in a few moments, I'll begin it by saying the Lord is here. And hopefully you will respond, his spirit is with us. It doesn't begin, well, it's good to be together, and it is. It's nice to see you, which is. But the Lord is actually here among us. God here at the heart of who we are and what we're doing. So he goes on, let your requests be made known to God. Don't worry about anything, he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Or as Eugene Peterson put it in his version called The Message, which often just shows and sheds fresh light. He says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful, he says, what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Or as Lawrence Freeman, a leading light in the Christian meditation movement wrote, in silence, we acknowledge that God knows our needs and that this knowledge is the love that creates and will eventually complete us. Good words. In silence, we acknowledge that God knows our needs and that this knowledge 
is the love that creates and will eventually complete us. And when that knowledge comes, a peace will descend upon us, a peace which transcends or surpasses in one version all our understanding. Now Paul, writing from prison in Paul, uh, uh, writing in, from prison in Rome, was writing to a group of people in Philippi, a Roman colony, part of the empire. They all knew about the boast of the empire, which was that the empire had brought peace to the world, Pax Romana. But the fact was that that, that Pax, that peace, was at a price. Tacitus, the Roman senator who served in far-flung provinces, wrote bitterly, they make a desolation and call it peace. A peace that's caused by war and created through war. You do often wonder when you see scenes of um, warfare, squabbling and fighting and bombing, as you are at the moment from Nagorno-Karabakh, you do wonder what sort of peace will there be at the end of it. Paul spoke of a more powerful peace and a Lord who alone can bring peace, who has defeated death, and we can be confident in the victory of the God of peace, who gives us quiet minds and hopeful hearts. So the picture of that tower of stones finding a sense of harmony and peace and balance. Finally, Paul says, whatever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, gracious, fill your minds with these things. Make these things a focus of what our lives are based on. You may ask, is this just an exercise in positive thinking, a denial of the reality that's around us? Paul would answer with a resounding no. We focus on God and find in him our peace. Do these things, he says, and the God of peace will be with you. May we learn afresh these wonderful lessons of love and peace and praise in our lives. Amen. Well, thank you, Tim. Uh, such encouraging words, a reminder of uh, these wonderful words from Paul. So let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So our prayers today are led by Peter. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be known to God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm in the Lord. We pray for 
those who have struggled in the work of the gospel. Pray for all who want to spread the good news in the world. And at this time, we bring before you those recently ordained and those newly licensed as readers. We pray for our bishops, Peter and Ruth, for Tim, the clergy team and every member of our church community as we struggle to live and proclaim the message of eternal love. <clears throat> Guard, guide and strengthen each one of us. And give us courage as we seek to bring your love to those living in fear at this uncertain and difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. We pray for those who care for others, whether lay or professional. We thank you for those in the caring professions and ask you to protect, especially those who are working in whatever capacity with the COVID-19, hospitals, surgeries, care homes, or even in our own homes. Pray for those who care for the disadvantaged, thinking of social services, food banks, counsellors, and for the Church Homeless Trust. We pray for those who simply care for their neighbour who is alone. Give all of them your heart, your love, and the safe knowledge of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. We pray for those who work for peace in the world's trouble spots, thinking of the Middle East, Africa, and now the regions around Armenia. We pray for those who work in relief organizations, caring for the refugees from these conflicts. Pray for those who seek to bring peace where there is division and seek to bring tolerance between different races, nations and creeds. Give each one the wisdom, tact and love and enable them to make a lasting difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. whatever is true, whatever is honourable. Help us always to live trustworthy and honest lives, honouring and tolerating others who are different to us as you honour us. Give us true servant hearts ready to reach out to others, especially in this difficult time. Give us wisdom, listening ears and open hearts ready to bring the truth of your love into others' lives. Make us channels of your peace, love and truth. May we rejoice always in your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the God of peace be with you. We pray for those in our parish, for our sick, and for those who care for them. We remember especially Ken, Elwin, Bishop Peter, Mary Bratt, Emma, Jane, Iris, Peter, Dawn, Dave, Maureen, George Bailey, David, Sue, Kate, Ron, and those who are known to each one of us. We also bring before you those who are and for especially for the families of Phyllis Goddard, Mervyn Spain, Margaret McDonald, Anne Fernand, and Dorothy Delgado. And we pray for all who grieve, especially and, and think too of those for whom this time of year is the anniversary of the loss of a loved one. May the God of peace be with them and with us all. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
the faith of your Son, and the Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. And we come now to the peace. Accept God's peace. Think of peace. Speak of peace. Act in peace. Pray for peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I'm also with, with you. you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. Um, you can wave to one another. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us in your, as, as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. During communion this morning, Bob and David will play a piece called Peace is Flowing Like a River. But we're invited wherever we are at home or here in church to receive something of the presence and love of God. Come because you are invited. Come because you hunger. Come because you will be fed. Come for healing. Come for forgiveness. Come to this place. Come to me, says Jesus. Just come.
We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given. So to together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of the Father be yours. The peace of the Saviour be yours. The peace of the Spirit be yours. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. And those for whom you pray this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. So thank you for joining with us this morning. Um, uh, we hope you have a good week ahead and that you may take with you some of those lessons from Paul writing to the Philippians.